Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to dive into a crucial topic for all Etsy sellers, filing your income taxes. As an Etsy seller since 2020, I have filed my taxes both with professional tax services and through QuickBooks Self-Employed and TurboTax. Filing your taxes as an Etsy seller, especially a print and demand seller, can be really intimidating, but it's actually simpler than you think. I recall my first year filing taxes as being really stressful. I really didn't know how or what to do to prepare for them, whether I needed to form an LLC or if I could just be a sole proprietor. So in today's video, I'm going to address whether or not you need to form an LLC and walk you through how to prepare for filing your income taxes. And I even created for you a free tax preparation PDF checklist if you would like to follow along with that, which I'll link in the description box below. Before we start, just a quick disclaimer that I am definitely not a tax expert. And this video is for informational purposes only. I do recommend speaking to or hiring a tax professional, a CPA, or an accountant for at least your first year, just so you know that you're filing everything correctly and you have the most accurate and up-to-date information for your own unique business. Because it is important to note that tax laws do vary state by state and can change over time. For the purpose of today's video, we will be discussing filing income taxes in the United States. So if you live outside of the US, this will not apply to you. Let's jump in. As a Etsy seller, you're essentially running a small business. This means you're responsible for reporting your income to the tax authorities. Whether you've made $100 or $5,000 or more, or you're a sole proprietor, an LLC, or some other type of business entity, understanding your tax obligations is the first step. And speaking of LLCs, a frequent question that I get is whether or not you need to form an LLC to sell an Etsy and to file taxes? And the answer is no, you do not have to have an LLC to sell an Etsy or file taxes. I personally began selling an Etsy as a sole proprietor where essentially you use your social security number, in place of an EIN number or a tax ID number to file your taxes. It's really important to note that when you open a new Etsy shop, make sure you update your taxpayer information, like adding in your social security number if you are a sole proprietor or your tax ID number if you have formed an LLC on Etsy's site or they can actually close your shop for not being compliant. Now I did eventually choose to form an LLC because having an LLC does add an extra layer of protection around your personal assets on the off chance that a customer would attempt to sue me or my business. With an LLC, they wouldn't be able to sue my personal assets or me as a person, they would sue my business. So an LLC just gives you an extra layer of protection if someone were to sue you. Luckily, no one has ever tried to sue me since I began selling on Etsy. And I don't personally know anyone who has been sued by a customer, but it's nice to know that I have the extra layer of protection just in case. It cost me around $100 to apply for an LLC and I did it through my government's website. Cost to apply for an LLC vary by state. Now that you know that you are in fact a business and that you don't need to apply for an LLC, let's talk about how to manage your expenses and income. As far as sales tax is concerned, Etsy does collect and remit sales tax on your behalf. So for the sake of this video, we will be focusing on filing your income taxes, which Etsy does not collect for you. So you are responsible for paying and reporting any tax liabilities on the income that you make on Etsy yourself. So now let's talk about the 1099K form. So if you made over $20,000 in revenue and more than 200 sales, Etsy will send you a 1099K form. However, this threshold may be changing when you go to file taxes next year because Etsy is expected to start sending 1099K forms to any sellers who make over $600 USD. This threshold did not go into effect this year as it was delayed until next year. So once again, be sure to check with your local CPA or accountant for the most up-to-date information for your business. What is a 1099K form? A 1099K form is used to report your gross sales to the IRS as part of filing your taxes. Gross sales on your 1099K form, according to the Etsy Help Center article about taxes, which I'll link for you below, may include but are not limited to all of your sales, shipping, refunds, card processing fees, and canceled orders. So if you receive your 1099 form, you may notice a difference between the income that Etsy has reported and the actual revenue that you sold on Etsy and that is showing on Etsy. The total revenue shown on your 1099 form is more than what you actually sold because the total doesn't reflect canceled or refunded sales, shipping fees, or card processing fees. So it's important to note that you will write off any order cancellations or refunds you had from your total revenue shown on your 1099. Keep in mind you're only required to pay taxes on the actual profit that you made on your business after deducting all of your expenses. To ensure that you're prepared, it is crucial to track all of your expenses throughout the year. This way you'll get a clear picture of your profit when it comes time to deduct your business expenses. And good record keeping is your best friend when it comes to taxes. It's important to track all of your sales, expenses, and receipts for your Etsy business. This includes materials, shipping costs, 
and even home office expenses when applicable. I personally track my expenses two different ways. One way is using an income and expense tracker tool, which I also use to track my estimated taxes each year, which I'll talk more about later in this video and I'll link for you below. Another way I also track my business expenses is using QuickBooks Self-Employed which I'll link for you below as well. Personally, I prefer using the income and expense tracker and then matching that against what is showing on QuickBooks so that no expenses, write-off, or income that should be reported is missed. This also gives me lots of detailed records for me to give my accountants when it's time to file my taxes. Now let's talk tax deductions. While I'm not a tax expert, I can give you some items to discuss with your tax professional. They can guide you on which expenses are eligible for write-offs and the applicable percentages. Remember to keep track of your expenses, including printing services like Printify, which is my print-and-demand supplier who prints and ships products for me. Regardless of which print-and-demand platform you use, you should be able to download monthly invoices that tell you exactly how much they charge you each month, as well as any subscription fees that they may have charged, such as if you use Printify Premium, which saves you 20% or more off of your orders, which you can sign up for using the referral link below. Other expenses that may qualify include mockups that you have purchased to use in your listing thumbnails, samples you may have ordered, subscription fees to services like Everbee for product and competitor research, or graphic design softwares like Kittle, as well as advertising fees. And just a heads up, my accountant did personally asked me to separate my Etsy fees from my advertising fees, so just a heads up there. A portion of your bills may also qualify as a write-off, so come prepared with the total cost of your rent or mortgage and other monthly bills. This applies to your home office expenses. To qualify for home office deductions, you typically need to meet two criteria. First, your home office must be used regularly and exclusively for conducting your business or work. This means it should be your primary workspace and shouldn't be used for personal activities. Secondly, your home office should be a significant and necessary part of your work or business. It should be the place where you manage administrative tasks, maybe meet with your clients, or conduct essential work-related activities. Once you meet these criteria, you can potentially deduct expenses like a portion of your rent or mortgage, utilities, and even maintenance costs. Be sure to keep accurate records and consult with a tax professional to ensure you're maximizing your eligible deductions while complying with current tax regulations. Remember that tax laws can change, so it's always a good idea to stay updated and consult with a tax expert for the most current information and most personalized advice. You can potentially deduct the cost of new equipment purchased for your business, like laptops, iPads, or office chairs. Keep meticulous records of these expenses and retain your receipts. If you use your vehicle for trips to the post office or store to source supplies for your Etsy business, you may qualify for mileage deductions. Be diligent in tracking these trips as business expenses. I personally like to keep track of my mileage using a mileage tracker, which you can find in my yearly business planner, as well as in my income and expense tracker, which I'll link below. If your anticipated tax liability or the amount you owe to the IRS at the end of the year exceeds $1,000, it's essential to begin making quarterly tax payments. If you expect to owe more than $1,000 to the IRS, visit the IRS website to initiate quarterly payments. If you don't pay your estimated taxes and owe over $1,000, then you may have to pay a fee for not remitting those payments. When I filed my taxes with my tax professional, he created a tax schedule for me so I knew exactly what to pay and when. To estimate the taxes, he simply took the total amount that I owed to the government the previous year and divided it into four different payments, or quarters, as this is an estimate what you will make the following year. So because of how much you make fluctuates each year on Etsy, you may end up owing more than what you paid on your estimated taxes, or you may be due a refund. But once again, it's really important that you talk to a tax professional so they can assist you with creating your own unique estimated tax schedule. You can track the estimated tax that you owe on paper, on a Google Doc, or Excel spreadsheet, or you can use tools like the one that I built in my income and expense tracker. Preparing your taxes for the previous year can be a really daunting task if you haven't been tracking your finances monthly. To simplify this process, I highly recommend using a service like QuickBooks or even an Excel or Google spreadsheet. In fact, I've developed my very own Google spreadsheet tailored to my business needs, which you can find in the description box below. As a bonus, it also includes 100 ChatGPT prompts to help you with your tax preparation this year. You can also find my brand new small business planner linked below as well, where you can track your yearly business goals, income and expenses, including mileage in PDF form, if you prefer using both methods. These tools can help you quickly assess whether your pricing strategy is on point or if adjustments are needed to avoid any unpleasant surprises like thinking you're making more than you actually are. However, old-fashioned paper and pencil works too, or simply crafting your own unique method, as long as you're working to keep really detailed records. I was also considering giving you a full step-by-step -step tutorial video on how I use QuickBooks Self-Employed to automatically track my income and expenses and then use that information 
to file my taxes on TurboTax. So let me know below if that's something that you're interested in in the future. I hope this video has been really helpful for you and has helped alleviate some of the concerns you may have had about filing your taxes for your Etsy business. While it can be a straightforward process, I still recommend consulting with a CPA to ensure that you have all the accurate information for your own business. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Please take a moment to like and subscribe for more valuable content in the future. And feel free to leave me any questions or comments below. Up next is a recent video you may want to check out. See you all there.